हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम प्रवीण चौबे आई एम हेयर टू डिस्कस अबाउट द सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ डिजाइन ऑफ थ्री फेज इंडक्शन मोटर इन माय प्रीवियस वीडियो यू माइट हैव गॉन थ्रू द फर्स्ट पार्ट वेयर वी हैव स्टार्टेड विद द बेसिक्स ऑफ द डिजाइन वेयर वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड द मेन डायमेंशंस ऑफ थ्री फेज इंडक्शन मोटर इन टूडेज पार्ट विल बी मूविंग फर्दर विथ सम मोर डिटेल्स ऑन इलेक्ट्रिकल मशीन डिजाइन दैट इज मोर ओवर the induction motor design three phase induction motor design part we are going to discuss today so the contents of today's session are simple that way and we'll be starting with first of all suitable combination for stator and rotor slots what number of stator and what number of rotor slots are to be chosen that will be the focus for today's session then we are moving for effect of harmonic field on performance of three phase induction motor uh, how the harmonic field is produced and what is its effect on performance of three phase induction motor that we are going to see in detail apart from that methods to reduce the harmonic induction harmonics in induction motor that is one more topic factors affecting the length of air gap and then the concept of unbalanced magnetic pull so all these concepts are very interesting and you will be uh, gaining something some knowledge will be gained by every one of us at the end of this session so without uh, wasting your time let us start with the session so uh, first of all the first topic i am starting with is the suitable combination for stator and rotor slots this is related with when we are designing the motor how many rotor slots and how many stator slots are to be chosen uh, the topic that way is simple and there is understanding or uh, there is knowledge gain you will gain something at the end of this as i said so uh, when we are designing a motor we know rotor and stator are the main parts of induction motor so when we are designing the slots of the motor stator and rotor slots we need to consider if rotor and stator slots are equal in number see here ss stands for number of stator slot while sr stands for number of rotor slots if they both are equal then there happens a phenomenon called cogging we are going to see in detail what is meaning of cogging in this presentation only in this discussion only what is cogging that we are going to see but uh, here what we need to understand is if we want to avoid the cogging then sr should not be equals to ss means number of stator slot ss should not be equals to the number of rotor slot sr if you want to avoid the cogging apart from that crawling is another phenomenon whose meaning also we are going to see in detail in this discussion only so crawling if you want to avoid then number of stator slot ss minus sr should not be equals to 3p you need to remember it should not be equals to 3p where p is nothing but number of poles p is standing for number of poles so if you are taking this ss say stator slots minus rotor slots this should not be equals to 3p if you want to avoid the phenomenon called crawling what is that why why this figure how came like this that all, this all things we are going to see in detail in today's discussion only apart from that if you want to avoid the synchronous hooks and cups in the torque if you want to uh, if you want the torque which is uh, useful some for some applications if you want to avoid hooks and cups uh, uh, in the torques the torque speed characteristic like the this type of nature in the torque speed characteristic if you want to avoid then there are the conditions ss minus sr means stator slot minus rotor slot should not be equals to p should not be equals to 2p or it should not be equals to 5p so p 2p 5p it should not be equals to that the condition to avoid the hooks and cups in torque speed characteristics apart from that if you want to avoid the noisy operation if you want to avoid noise which is developed in induction motor then this is the condition to be satisfied ss minus sr number of stator slot minus number of rotor slot should not be equals to 1 or 2 or p plus minus 1 p plus minus 2 again i need to mention p here is nothing but the number of poles uh, number of poles generally uh, two pole four pole induction motor we we have heard this so number of poles uh, is p is standing here for number of poles 
Hence, finally, if I combine all the conditions, all the conditions, those are mentioned, say condition 1, 2, 3 and 4, if I combine all them, then I could say SS minus SR, number of status slot minus number of rotor slot should not be equal to 0, plus minus P, plus minus 2P, plus minus 3P, plus minus 5P, plus minus 1, plus minus 2 or P plus minus 1, P plus minus 2, that's what is understanding. So, uh, whenever we are thinking of how many stator and rotor slots are to be taken for induction motor the understanding out of it is we need to understand in detail that these are the conditions those are to be satisfied while choosing the number of stator and rotor slots so if these conditions are satisfied then only the motor will work properly otherwise the problems will occur and what those problems are that we have seen uh, such as cogging crawling then synchro uh, synchronous hooks and cups in torque speed characteristic noisy operation these are the problems associated if number of stator and rotor slots are not chosen properly then uh, moving further the next part is again something interesting that is uh, we'll be calling it as uh, calling it as effect of harmonic field on performance of three phase induction motor when we are uh, thinking of induction motor we need to understand that harmonic field is present in induction motor harmonic field is produced in induction motor what is its nature what how it is going to exactly affect on performance that part we need to discuss so effect of harmonic field basically the phenomenon which occurs is related with the number of stator and rotor slots first of all if if we th start with the first part that is say cogging this is the effect of harmonic field on performance of three phase induction motor by mistake suppose or by 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 some mistake if you have taken number of stator slots ss equals to sr number of rotor slot then in that case there is magnetic interlocking between the magnetic field of stator and magnetic field of rotor as the stator and rotor magnetic field is exactly similar because number of stator and rotor slots are same but they are opposing each other their nature is to oppose each other the rot rotor and stator magnetic field has a nature to exactly oppose each other if it is opposing each other and if it is same in magnitude then definitely the motor will refuse to start and the magnetic interlocking occurs between stator and rotor and we are calling that as a cogging so this is effect of harmonic field how it exactly happens or how exactly the harmonic field is produced that also we are going to see in next slide apart from that there is one more phenomenon called crawling crawling is one more thing where motor rotates at some some sub synchronous speed if synchronous speed of motor you have considered is n s synchronous speed then motor will rotate at sub uh, sub synchronous speed say small n s where small n s is less than capital n s than actual synchronous speed so motor runs at sub synchronous speed which is definitely less than the synchronous speed we can say the harmonic field which is produced uh, the part we are talking is about the harmonic field performance of uh, uh, effect of harmonic field on performance of induction motor this harmonic field is generally produced due to the pro problems with the winding slotting slots number of slots those are provided then the saturation magnetic saturation which occurs in the core and uneven air gap if the air gap is uneven so these are the causes of production of mag harmonic field harmonic field in the induction motor is occur due to these problems mainly windings slottings saturation and uneven air gap these are the problems uh, these are the causes of production of harmonic field now uh, when this harmonic field is produced it induces this field induces the emf in rotor winding and circulates the current which causes losses losses basically we need to understand the basic phenomena whenever a magnetic field is present any magnetic field which is present and if you place a current carrying conductor in that magnetic field we know that the flux is cut by the conductor uh, may not be a current carrying conductor but this could be a conductor which is placed in magnetic field if magnetic field is alternating in nature likewise if magnetic field is alternating in nature and a conductor is placed here then flux is cut by the conductor emf gets induced in it if we uh, if we remember <coughs> uh, about the rotor of induction motor 
Rotor of induction motor is generally short circuited. If it is short circuited, it means it has a closed path for current to flow. So we could say the magnetic field which is produced here is uh, that is a harmonic field which is produced. The harmonic field will introduce the EMF in rotor winding. This is important. A harmonic field will produce the EMF in rotor winding and due to that the current will circulate and definitely this is not the natural current which is flowing so this current is going to cause the losses and uh, other effect if you think of the number of poles instead of p number of poles the number of pole becomes np where n is order of harmonic say first order third order seventh order harmonic we say likewise number of poles in the motor will increase what happens if the number of poles increase we need to think of the synchronous speed ns which is given by simply 120 f by p where f is frequency p is number of poles as rightly we said the number of poles are increasing say uh, for example we could take say seventh harmonic is present in the motor if seventh harmonic is present in the motor then instead of p you need to take number of poles as 7p if i am increasing the number of poles what happens to the synchronous speed you will easily understand that synchronous synchronous speed ns is proportional to 1 by p so if p becomes 7p as i considered 7th harmonic then ns will be reduced by 1 by 7 times moreover so if ns is reduced by 1 by 7 times it means the synchronous speed is reduced and that is how we could say that is how we said the motor will rotate at some sub synchronous speed that is why we have said the motor is not rotating with the synchronous speed but it is rotating with some sub synchronous speed again uh, again if you look at some uh, more thing related to the same the harmonic field which is produced the harmonic field which is produced it produces two torques two torques will be produced by the harmonic field harmonic field i hope everyone has understood harmonic field is the field produced by harmonics harmonic those are present or those will be introduced in <coughs> induction motor why they are produced that is the reasons we have seen in last slide okay so it produces two torques what those two torques are first torque out of it the first harmonic torque will be calling it as harmonic induction torque the first torque first term we are calling it as harmonic induction torque this harmonic induction torque is of the order 6n plus minus 1 where n is any integer say we'll consider it it is equals to 1 so if n becomes equals to 1 then uh, the harmonic of the order 6n means 6 plus minus 1 so harmonic of the order 7 or harmonic of the order 5 so with that consideration say n is equals to 1 we can say the positive moment harmonic of order say 1 and negative moment harmonic of order 5 will be produced due to this reverse current motor rotates at some sub synchronous speed and that phenomenon we are calling it as crawling so crawling is a phenomenon which is occurring in the motor due to mainly fifth harmonic fifth harmonic which is a reverse harmonic which is reducing the speed of motor and we could say the motor will run at the sub synchronous speed which is less than the synchronous speed this phenomenon we are calling it as crawling okay and it will be avoided crawling can be avoided in the motor that can be avoided by considering this is very important statement this can be avoided if the number of rotor slots does not exceed the number of stator slot by 15 to 13 percent so it should not exceed this can be avoided i said crawling can be avoided if number of rotor slots does not exceed the number of stator slot by 15 to 13 percent that's what we need to understand out of it another torque as we rightly said the harmonic field will produce two torques first one is uh, resulting in crawling another torque that is represented here second harmonic synchronous torque what it does harmonic synchronous torque we need to understand if harmonic produced by the stator and rotor are same when they will become same if number of stator slot ss is equals to sr so in that case harmonic produced by both stator and rotor will be same in number if they are same in number then the number of poles and their speed is also equal number of poles will be equal in stator and rotor 
द सिंक्रोनस स्पीड ऑफ द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड विल ऑल्सो बी द सेम द टॉर्क इज नो डाउट अपोजिंग ईच अदर द टॉर्क प्रोड्यूस बाय स्टेटर एंड टॉर्क प्रोड्यूस बाय रोटर इज नो डाउट अपोजिंग ईच अदर हेन्स इट रिजल्ट इन द मैग्नेटिक इंटरलॉकिंग बिटवीन स्टेटर एंड रोटर सो स्टेटर एंड रोटर गेट्स मैग्नेटिकली इंटरलॉक्ड एंड मोटर विल नॉट रोटेट मोटर रिफ्यूज टू स्टार्ट सो वी आर कॉलिंग दिस एज कॉगिंग दिस सिचुएशन कैन बी कंसिडर्ड एज कॉगिंग वेयर स्टेटर स्लॉट्स इज इक्वल्स टू रोटर स्लॉट्स एस एस नंबर ऑफ स्टेटर स्लॉट्स नंबर ऑफ स्टेटर स्लॉट्स एस एस शुड बी कंसिडर्ड इक्वल्स टू नंबर ऑफ रोटर स्लॉट्स इफ इट ऑकर्स द हार्मोनिक्स दोज आर प्रोड्यूस बाय स्टेटर एंड रोटर दोज आर ऑल्सो सेम द टॉर्क इज सेम इन मैग्नेट्यूड बट इट इज अपोजिंग ईच अदर स्टेटर स्टेटर टॉर्क एंड रोटर टॉर्क इज अपोजिंग ईच अदर एंड हेज देर इज मैग्नेटिक इंटरलॉकिंग बिटवीन द स्टेटर एंड रोटर सो वी नो दिस सिचुएशन वेर मोटर रिफ्यूज टू स्टार्ट वी आर कंसिडरिंग दैट सिचुएशन एज कॉगिंग दिस कैन ऑल्सो बी अवॉइडेड सी फ्रेंड्स दिस इज इंटरेस्टिंग कॉगिंग कैन ऑल्सो बी अवॉइडेड इफ वॉट कैन बी डन दिस कैन बी अवॉइडेड इफ द नंबर ऑफ रोटर स्लॉट्स आर नॉट इक्वल्स टू द नंबर ऑफ स्टेटर स्लॉट्स दैट इज नोन टू अस दिस सिचुएशन वी हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड इफ एस आर इज नॉट इक्वल्स टू एस एस देन कॉगिंग विल नॉट ऑकर सो कॉगिंग कैन बी अवॉइडेड बाय बाय अवॉइडिंग सेम नंबर ऑफ स्टेटर एंड रोटर स्लॉट्स वेयर मोटर विल रिफ्यूज टू स्टार्ट द फिनोमिन ऑन वी कॉल्ड एज कॉगिंग देन मूविंग फर्दर रिडक्शन इन हार्मोनिक टॉर्क द नेक्स्ट थिंग इज हाउ टू रिड्यूज द हार्मोनिक टॉर्क as we have seen in last slide what are the effects the of harmonic field on performance of three phase induction motor the harmonic torque which produces will cause what is the effect if if i ask you the answer will be cogging and crawling these are the effects of harmonic torque right so to avoid that reduction in harmonic torque how how to reduce that that can be done uh, by by means of three methods those are mentioned here for reducing the harmonic tor torque there are three methods so those three methods we are going to see the first method is uh, very important the first method which is which is very important mentioned here integral slot wide uh, winding we can we can say it the meaning is when we are taking the number of slots per pole per phase number of slots per pole per phase that should be equal to a fractional number if we consider this as fractional number that will occur due to this what happens is to create a symmetrical mmf distribution around air gap in the air gap of the induction motor you need to understand this is say stator rotor in between there is air gap and where the magnetic field we are considering so to avoid or to create the asymmetrical mmf distribution around the air gap number of slots per pole per phase should be a fractional number that's what we need to understand so i hope you will understand this and there is uh, one more thumb rule um, when we are choosing number of slots per pole per phase there is one more thumb rule roughly we, we could calculate or roughly we can say that we should take the number of slots per pole per phase should not be greater than or should be great, uh, greater than 2 for small motors we need to understand generally for the motors generally for the small motors slots per pole per phase should be greater than 2 so it can be considered as 3 or 5 3 or 5 will be the general value which we are considering for slots per pole per phase okay uh, in some numericals i am posting some videos related to the numericals on design of induction motor so there this part will discuss in detail once again in coming videos right now you could remember this should be greater than 2 slots per pole per phase should be greater than 2 so further another method method to reduce the harmonic torque which is produced in induction motor there is one more method called cording cording is a method uh, sorry cording is a method which is shown here where what we are doing is number of slots per pole per phase should be a integral number like it was a fractional number we said in earlier part here it is a integral number so integral number means what we will be considering uh, any in integral where we could weaken the stator winding mmf so mmf of the stator winding will be reduced 
by means of cording this method called cording slots per pole per face should be a integral number like it was a fractional number in earlier case one more important and interesting method we'll be calling it as skewing skewing is a method where the rotor con uh, the rotor conductors are arranged such that they should have some angle there should be some angle between the stator conductor and rotor conductors how how that angle is produced that is shown in the diagram see this one a construction of uh, a construction of a rotor is shown here instead of see uh, generally generally the bar should be such that they are parallel to each other likewise instead of directly considering them straight and directly connecting them to end rings these are the end rings we can say this is first end ring second end ring and this bar could be simply the straight bars instead of connecting them uh, straight we could we have arranged them such that the rotor bars are slightly skewed means they have slightly some angle generally this diagram if i'm considering two end rings this could be simply like the straight lines should be connected without any angle or moreover uh, for better understanding i could draw it like this these are say two end rings and these are the state uh, the, the, these are the rotor bars instead of connecting them like this if we connect them with some angle between them like it is shown in this figure like it is shown in this figure if you connect them like this the method is called skewing so by doing all these things number three number things we have discussed by doing all these things what we are doing is we are trying to reduce the harmonic torque so harmonic torque can be reduced by means of three methods those are mentioned here method number one is integral slot winding other is cording and third one is skewing so if we if we do these things while designing the motor the harmonic torque will be reduced then uh, then the further part is even uh, something interesting something to know about factors affecting length of air gap <clears throat> we know that between the stator and the rotor there must be a air gap when you are choosing a air gap how much air gap has to be uh, provided that is affected by or that is dependent on several factors if we choose the length of air gap that is going to affect on performance of motor so we are going to see what are the factors those are going to affect on length of air gap first out of it is power factor power factor is going to going to be affected if we change the length of air gap how we are going to see see first thing first statement is larger the air gap mmf required to pass the current through air gap should be high if you want if you have taken large air gap then mmf which is required to pass the current through air gap will be high so mmf which is generally represented by ampere tons in air gap so i have represented it with atg which is mmf of gap air gap mmf generally in magnetic field is given by the product of flux into reluctance it is similar to the formula of emf which is in electric circuit say v is equals to ir we are considering so in magnetic circuit mmf at becomes equals to phi into reluctance s so this is known to all of us i hope uh this comparison is known to all of us so hence we could say that ampere tons are proportional to lg am i right ampere tons means mmf is proportional to lg length of air gap from this discussion as length of air gap increases the mmf requirement increases to pass the we said current instead of current we could have used here the uh, word flux we must have used the word here flux if air gap is larger mmf required to pass the flux through air gap is high then i have written further as ampere tons is proportional to lg where lg is length of air gap now see what happens if ampere tons increases then lg increases it means if ampere tons are in increase then magnetic current will also increase if magnetic current increases cos phi reduces the current is dependent on or sorry the power factor cos phi is dependent on the magnetic current if magnetic current increases power factor decreases as this magnetic current will be the loss current then we could consider the power factor decreases so simply 
understanding will be very clear and we need to remember finally length of air gap lg is proportional to 1 upon cos phi where cos phi is power factor and we need to understand whenever we are increasing the air gap in between the stator and rotor of induction motor power factor will decrease so if you want to design the motor for better power factor we should take the air gap as low as possible if lg is less power factor is better that's what is the understanding out of it another factor which is going to affect the air gap is something interesting to understand something uh, we must understand second thing uh, which is represented here factor affecting the length of air gap that is called overload capacity now overload capacity in previous videos if you go you will find what is meaning of overload capacity mainly if you want to understand it here in shortly you can understand the overload capacity is the ratio of maximum power to the rated power from circle diagram this is the uh, for example a circle diagram is also shown here so when we take the ratio of maximum power to the rated power every machine we know is rated to some power so if the maximum power which is present or which can be handled by the machine divided by the rated power if you do if you take this ratio of maximum power to the rated power that becomes equal to the overload capacity that becomes the overload capacity of that machine so overload capacity from this circle diagram is the ratio of mn upon al which is greater if the leakage reactance is less you will understand it what i am saying you need to look at the circle diagram which is shown see mn is this distance right mn likewise another distance shown here is say al this point is a this point is l right so mn is considered as maximum power al is considered as the rated power the motor the machine is rated to be working for power al which is represented here see this is a l so this line is representing al is representing the rated power while the maximum power is represented by this line mn so if you take the ratio of maximum power to the rated power that becomes mn upon al is greater this is greater this ratio itself is greater means overload capacity is greater if leakage reactance which is represented with xs2 is less how how I, how this statement is made you need to think of or you need to look at the circle diagram once again see this part of the circle diagram is representing vs upon x s2 this x s2 is considered as leakage reactance x s2 here is considered as leakage reactance so the statement is really uh, meaningful and we need to understand overload capacity which is the ratio of these two mn upon al is greater this will be greater if leakage reactance x s2 is less if leakage reactance is less it means this ratio will be greater see you need to understand if i reduce the value of x s2 what happens here what is the effect on circle diagram if x s2 is less then the ratio vs upon x s2 will be high if this ratio is high if this ratio is high then in that case this size will be wider right if this size is wider then this will be so that this is increasing what is increasing in that case mn maximum power is increasing if maximum power increases the ratio will increase hence overload capacity will increase so we need to understand or we need to say we can say from this discussion such that if x s2 that is leakage reactance is less then overload capacity is high that is one thing apart from that another thing we need to understand if air gap is large then leakage reactance is less and hence overload overload capacity is high if you consider all this then we can simply say that overload capacity is proportional to length of air gap overload capacity is proportional to length of air gap it means if you want higher overload capacity 
the length of air gap lg should be as high as possible the earlier relation if you remember with power factor power factor there was different relation lg should be less if you want higher power factor while when it comes to the overload capacity lg should be high lg should be high for high overload capacity that's what we need to remember this is the second relation moving further third part or the third factor here third factor we are considering here is the pulsation loss in coming videos you will be uh, going to see or we are going to discuss in detail what is pulsation loss right now we need to understand this is the loss which is occurring in the induction motor why it is called pulsation loss all those things i will cover in coming time but the length of air gap lg is to be considered if pulsation loss you want to be less lg should be as high as possible so there is inverse proportion between pulsation loss and length of air gap this is third factor fourth one is ump unbalanced magnetic pool it is called ump meaning of ump we are going to cover in this video only then in coming slides ump you will understand what is that but right now you need to understand if lg length of air gap increases then ump decreases ump decreases unbalanced magnetic pool what is that we are going to cover in coming slides only as i said the next part will be discussion on unbalanced magnetic pool pool as we have um, as we are going through the contents given in the first slide next one is cooling we know that if length of air gap is greater then cooling is better if you get more area more space then cooling will be better that we need to understand next one is noise if lg is greater then noise is less noise produced by the motor is less if length of air gap is more so these are all the factors all the six are the factors those are affecting the length of air gap whenever we are deciding the length of air gap that how much air gap has to be taken we need to consider all the six factors so i hope you understood this part length length of air gap then the next part generally there is some empirical formula then Gen uh, generally there is some empirical formula to uh, calculate the length of air gap and what is that formula that is given by generally the length of air gap lg is given by 0.2 plus 2 square root dl mm where d and l are the main dimensions of induction motor that is known to all of us then some uh, some more formulas are given there this formulas you are supposed to remember as these are the important empirical formulas those are to be used for uh, the induction motors so these are just the formulas empirical formulas to be remembered for calculation of length of air gap how it is calculated see we have seen the different factors those are going to affect the length of air gap and then how to calculate that that part also is covered with the help of this formulas then moving to the last and important part related to induction motor that is unbalanced magnetic pool now this unbalanced magnetic pool is a important concept and several times the question is asked in the examination on this that write a short note on what is unbalanced magnetic pool uh, explain in detail what is unbalanced magnetic pool likewise the questions will be asked and we have uh, already seen the relation that length of air gap is inversely proportional to ump so if you want to reduce unbalanced magnetic pool length of air gap should be as large as possible so that's what is the relation that we have seen in earlier slide here we are going to see in detail what is unbalanced magnetic pool so friends you need to understand unbalanced magnetic pool is a radial force acting on the rotor due to non uniform air gap around the armature periphery this is the definition if you are not understood the definition still it is okay in in the coming slide i am showing you the diagram where you can understand the meaning of what i said just now unbalanced magnetic pull is a radial force which is acting on rotor due to the non uniform air gap so whenever the uniform uh, the air gap is not uniform some radial forces are acting on the rotor and those we are calling as this force we are calling it as unbalanced magnetic pull you need to understand this what are the causes or why unbalanced magnetic pull is created in induction motor that is created due to the causes of umpr uneven air gap whenever air gap is uneven some manufacturing defects in the motor so that air gap is uneven air gap could not be same uh, in the between the stator and rotor 
वीयर ऑफ बीरिंग इफ इट ऑकर्स असिमेट्रिक मैग्नेटिक सर्किट असिमेट्रिक वाइंडिंग और पुअर मेंटेनेंस ड्यू टू ऑल दीज थिंग देर आर चांसेस दैट अनबैलेंस मैग्नेटिक पुल विल बी ऑकरिंग इन द मोटर सो टू अवॉइड द अनबैलेंस मैग्नेटिक पुल वी कुड से दीज आर द फैक्टर दोज आर टू बी एड्रेस्ड दोज आर टू बी एड्रेस्ड और इन अदर वर्ड्स आई कुड से दीज आर द कॉजेस फॉर अनबैलेंस मैग्नेटिक पुल नेक्स्ट वन इज द अंडरस्टैंडेबल इफेक्ट ऑफ यू एम पी आर मीन्स इफ अनबैलेंस मैग्नेटिक पुल ऑकर इन मोटर वॉट कॉजेस और वॉट आर इट्स इफेक्ट द इफेक्ट्स आर सैचुरेशन ऑफ मैग्नेटिक मटेरियल ड्यू टू रिडक्शन इन एयर गैप सैचुरेशन ऑफ मैग्नेटिक मटेरियल्स ड्यू टू रिडक्शन इन एयर गैप अनदर इज एक्सेसिव वाइब्रेशन एंड नॉइज ड्यू टू अनबैलेंस रेडियल फोर्सेस सो नॉइज इज गोइंग टू बी मोर इफ द रेडियल फोर्सेस दोज आर एक्टिंग ऑन द रोटर आर हायर इन मैग्नेट्यूड एंड वाई दे आर ऑकरिंग दे आर ऑकरिंग ड्यू टू अनबैलेंस मैग्नेटिक पुल मोर ओवर to understand it better i have drawn here some diagrams so that you will understand the unbalanced magnetic pull in better way there are some uh, there are two words in fact one is called concentric concentric is one word other is eccentric another word is eccentric concentric and eccentric these two words are important to understand this generally the shaft of the motor which is shown see you need to understand the shaft of the motor then the rotor part of the motor and the stator part all these three see generally whenever i am uh, thinking of induction motor a shaft i will consider then a rotor i will consider and then a stator part i will consider generally these three shaft rotor and stator of the motor are concentric means they are aligned with across Uh, i could say they are aligned across the same center point concentric right generally they must be concentric but due to the causes of ump given due to some uh, unbalance or due to the faulty production in motor due to say uh, improper uh, maintenance of the motor aging of the motor or if uh, there is wear and tear of the bearing due to that this point the center points get shifted or the stator and rotor are not symmetrical like they are shown in this diagram now see this is the shaft this is rotor so what happens due to this is due to this the air gap which is present on all sides of this rotor or the air gap which is present between stator and rotor is uneven it is not same as it was shown in the first diagram see air gap is not even air gap is not same it is uneven same thing is exp uh, explained in the next diagram also the air gap is uneven also the shape of rotor is changing so if this happens if if any problem occurs with the concentric point means eccentricity we can say we are calling this as eccentric if they are not concentric they are eccentric these are the concentric points those are shown here uh, sorry just a minute these are the this is the concentric construction which is shown this two i am calling them as eccentric these are not concentric so these are eccentric so if this eccentricity occurs then we are calling we, are, we could say the forces those are acting radial forces those are acting on the rotor are uneven they are not common and these radial forces are going to create the losses so unbalanced magnetic pull we know as given in the definition unbalanced magnetic pull is nothing but the radial forces acting on rotor due to non uniform air gap around the armature periphery so i hope you understood it with the help of the diagram which is shown diagrams those are shown here 1 2 3 so this is the concept of unbalanced magnetic pull and this concept is very very important for all of you from uh, examination point of view so i request you to please prepare this so if we if we look at the contents of this presentation i will go through it very quickly if we look at the contents of this presentation first was suitable combination of stator and rotor slot that we have covered effect of harmonic field on uh, three phase induction motor that is also covered methods to reduce harmonics how to reduce harmonic that is covered 
factors affecting length of air gap is covered and last one is concept of unbalanced magnetic pool so all these are the important concepts for uh, for this particular part that is design of three phase induction motor and i hope you have understood all the parts uh, i have discussed in this video i request you to please like this video please subscribe to this channel channel for upcoming videos related to the design of motors or design of transformers also so uh, that's it today from my side i i wish all of you to be safe thank you thank you very much friends